Muppets. So it's the week live q and I'm Jason Master Mateo. Five more minutes and we'll be live on the My Amazon Guy live Q&A 
with Jason Master Mateo weekly Fridays at 12 Eastern. be live in one minute that's right in just 60 short seconds you'll be able to ask any amazon question that your heart has ever sought the answer to
Hello and welcome everyone. Happy Friday. I'm unmuted today. Um, <laughs> hope everyone's doing well. Um, good evening, good afternoon, or good morning, wherever you are. I found out from... Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is the Friday, my Amazon Guy podcast, in case you weren't aware. That's it. <laughs> oh, I found out from Steven last time when he showed up that we can click the little things before the timer runs out, so it automatically pops up. Ooh. Getting fancy. Ooh, so we then there's no, it. like, waiting Whoa. period. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> so whenever we're going over something really important, we can zoom in so people know that, that they need to pay As attention Faith to mentioned, this is the live Q&A. Friday, live. Lion's on Guy podcast. Nine o'clock in the morning for me. If you can't tell, I kind of had a late night. Look at my eyes. Jeez. Oh my God, poor Jason. <laughs> uh, it's okay. We're, it happens we're here to, to answer the best. any and all of your Amazon, Walmart life questions, questions about Magic the Gathering, football, anything. Yu Gi Oh! Uh, we Yu-Gi-Oh. have many card game experts here. Uh, disclaimer we are not lawyers or therapists, so any advice outside of Amazon, take with a grain of salt. Except for Yu Gi Oh! advice. Yeah, no, definitely take that with um, a great. Hello. <laughs> hello, hello. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Welcome to our podcast. Welcome to your podcast. Yeah, actually. Welcome, welcome to my our podcast. Yes. Um, our, so our I, as a company at my Amazon guy, we just completed a, a, a 300 person snake contest. Uh, we played Slither.io. <laughs> Jason, how did you do? What was your score? I, I I got uh, 1,800, but this big oh, giant dude. snake went around me and I couldn't get Trapped out. Trapped you and, in. Yeah. Yep. Rude, so. Faith, yeah. Faith, how did you turn out? <laughs> Not as good as Jason. Like, I think I topped out at like four or 500. So nice. very mid yeah. player. <laughs> yeah. So I, 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 I got like a respectable 4,000. And Jazz just posted that, her score 8,000. So I think oh, she's going to win the event. So we got cash <laughs> yeah. prizes on the line at my Amazon guy. And uh, for those that have no idea what we're talking about, I probably should just demo this really quick. So I'll share my <laughs> screen so you guys have any idea. But we're we're having lots of fun over at my Amazon guy today. So we played played uh, Slither.io, and this is you know just a snake game. You come in here and you, you eat some dots like this. Uh, and so I announced the game. I said everybody's got 15 minutes. Post your high score. Cash prizes on the line, and uh, that's how I'm going to decide who to promote. At my Amazon guys, so you know, it's true. having lots of fun today. <laughs> well, congrats, Jazz. <laughs> know, it's pretty good. I haven't read all the scores yet, but the uh, deadline just passed right before we started the podcast. So anyway, um, you guys have fun on the podcast today. Uh, yes. I just wanted to quickly drop in, say hello. Uh, yesterday, every Thursday at noon from here on out, we have a new format where I'm going to be interviewing sellers on camera instead of just reading comments. So there were like 57 comments that people left on our video yesterday that Jason and Faith are gonna try and work in, um, you know, prioritize the, the member questions and the people that are here live today, but we'll work some of those in if you try to get through. And then next Thursday, if you wanna go on camera with me, uh, just go to myamazonguy.com slash subscribe and you can get into our newsletter. And in there, uh, we'll send out a link when we're going to go live and you guys can get on camera with me. So if you're interested in that, my Amazon got slash subscribe, and then we'll give out the stream yard link a day before. And then the day of just simply come in. Uh, unfortunately, we only have 10 people in the back room at a time. So we'll kick people out as they go on, keep, keep checking, keep coming back and whatnot. So that's a, that's a new, new thing. I'm really excited about how that format turned out yesterday. And with that in mind, I turn it over to the wonderful, <laughs> ongoing superfest of Jason and Faith. You guys wait, are wait, great. Wait, 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 wait! You can't leave oh, yet. You're great. You have to plug this still. Okay. <laughs> All right. We also have <laughs> yeah. Seller Fest coming up, November 14th through 18th. Um, <clears throat> I'm speaking on three reasons to use your Amazon search query report. This is one of my favorite things ever in brand analytics. Uh, they put on a really great event, so you're definitely gonna want to register for that, guys. Uh, we do have an affiliate link, I think. Uh, let's see if we can get that posted. So. Geraldine's got it. 
There you go. Uh, so if you sign up with that, I think they may or may not send me a Chipotle burrito. Maybe. I'm not even sure. Uh, but I like being part of the event. I've done it several times. So check that guy's out. You get chips and salsa and no burrito. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there is free food on the line regardless. Lock mode enabled. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> All right. So we got lots of questions coming in. People saying, hello. Hi, Ryad. Hey. Hello. Noman off of LinkedIn here. Good afternoon from Kevin in Lakeland, Florida. Kevin. Good afternoon, that, that is Kevin. Like branded in my head, Kevin. It is. <laughs> every time saying yeah. that. Uh, let's see. We got good morning from Key and many other people uh, waiting on the podcast. So with that and said, I'm going to turn it over. You guys have a great day. Enjoy the podcast. We'll see you guys later. Thanks, Stephen. You have a great day, sir. All right. I am not that formal with Stephen all the time. All right. Michael. Thank you, sir. Right. Well, yes, thank you so much. And then Michael asks, I have orders in my queue that are three to four weeks old and some over a month. Is there a threshold that Amazon has for the customer to purchase or cancel? So that can be set on the back. If these are FBM, and I assume they are, if they said that they're in your queue, uh, you can actually set that threshold yourself through your shipping settings. Um, so She's that talking would about depend- pending orders, Faith. Not, not pending orders, not like shipping. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. So, I misread so, that. Yeah, like it, in the FBA, only one about <laughs> FBA, you'll see like pending orders, and it's like one month out. This, this is Michael. This is usually subscribe and save. Um, check if you're you have subscribe and save, and uh, uh, on any of your items, and uh, if you do, what will happen is Amazon will will um will put that order on hold in your account. Sometimes yeah. up to sometimes up to a couple weeks ahead of time, and if the customer that's a subscriber um, delays it or cancels it, it takes some time for it to get back put back into the system. Uh, if yeah. you don't have subscribe and save, and you have a lingering pending order in there, um, and it's only a couple of them, you can take it Amazon, but they're gonna say you know um, there's a problem with the buyer's credit card, and they're reaching out to yeah. them or something like that. Uh, but usually if there's a ton of these, it's subscribe and save. And, and that's normal. Yep. Good question. Good question. Sorry, I misunderstood. The first no, okay. Answer, though. So, yeah. Oh, and thank you for becoming a member. Do you ve- vegan? You are do you awesome. All right. And then they asked, hello, guys. Part one of two. If I buy a brand without the Amazon account, it's okay to ask the previous owner to delete the ASIN from his account and then list it under the same SKU to my account. And then part two, it could work to transfer the same FN SKU label and also the original SKU attribution to my account. So the good news here, DU Vegan, is that all the information is going to be tied at the ASIN level. So the SKU may not necessarily be the same. If you want it to be the same, you can put it on your account, same SKU, no problem. Um, the FN SKU though, Jason, correct me if I'm wrong, that w- may change if it's created from another account. Um, so that's the only thing, but everything else that was tied to that ASIN, so reviews, ranking, if you list that on your account, that's fine. Um, it doesn't even necessarily need to be deleted from the other Amazon account, but that being said, I would recommend to um, go ahead and if, if possible, have that person uh, or the former owner delete it because that'll cause problems down the road. Uh, if you don't, Amazon might pull a, Oh, this one has another con- contribution and you might not be able to update your titles or images or anything like that. Faith hit it right on the head here. It, the information stored at the ASIN level on, um, you'll be able to list it as long as uh, if you have a brand new account and it's something that you need approval for like grocery or, or, supplements or something something like that you're going to have to make sure that you submit approval on the new account and all that mm-hmm. um the fnsq uh, fnsq stands for uh, fulfillment network stock keeping unit there's an internal um that that is uh, an identifier to the specific item the specific account that it came from um where it came from uh essentially so it's going to be different the one workaround here is if you are using or the former owner is using merchant labels, so UPC or GS1, um, mm-hmm. and then you can, um, it, it'll be the same because the UPC is the same. But uh, yeah, you should be good to go on, on that. This is pretty normal as far as that. The FBA stock in the old account is going to have to get recalled uh, or, um, or sold out 
uh, however you guys want to do it, whatever the, the business proposal is. But uh, yeah, you're good to go. Seal of approval from us. All right, Dante TV says, going to launch a new product and a whole new brand. How should we allocate our PPC for a great launch? So there is not um, a good answer here. There is, however, I have a reference to show you that you can go by. I think I showed this on the last podcast, but it is our um, how to forecast sales. So basically what this is, is it's a spreadsheet um, that helps you kind of calculate like what you can afford to put in a PPC. So all of this to say, and I'll go ahead and share my screen too, so you can see what I'm talking about. All of this to say that you can use this as a guide to see how much you can put in a PPC and then from there put as much as possible for a new launch um, because you want to take advantage of that honeymoon period. Um, now, for PPC, I would not put all of my eggs into that basket until uh, your listing's fully baked. So what I mean by that is with SEO, images, A plus content, make sure you have your alt text. Um, but yeah, after that, use this as a guide and then put as much as possible into uh, PPC, making sure to segment uh, some basic campaigns like your auto campaign, manual keyword campaign, and you can get those keywords from your search query performance report on brand analytics or Helium 10, um, and then some other campaigns. But if you want more information on that, we have a Tuesday podcast with Matthew Davis, and he is more than happy to give you a very detailed rundown on what you should do for your PPC launches. Faith, can you Anything post that? Link? Can you post that link in the chat? Absolutely. Thank you. We also have our uh, well, Dante's probably launched products already, but I got it. I got to pitch Mag Mag School as well for our launch uh, course. <laughs> I will allow you to do that. <laughs> Mag-School.com. That's it. That's it. That's the promo. Um, You'll get a demo at the end, don't worry though. All right. Awesome. And then uh, SC Trojan Baller123. <laughs> I hope that's how you say you're using okay, it. Okay. Okay. This is, he's at, uh, I always say Jam Baller because they've asked questions before. Jam um, Baller? And okay, cool. the first part, when I see it in my head, almost looks like Scrow. <laughs> and Scrow? <then> <laughs> But I get it now. This is, I'm guessing, USC Trojan Baller. One, two, three. Okay. Oh, I said Trojan. Trojan Baller. So I'm I USC see, Trojans. Trojan there. Baller, not Jan Baller. You know what, though? Thanks for being a player, a team player, and not like saying anything about it when we put your username. Anyway, on to your question. Any special Black Friday Lightning deals we can run? Or is it just like setting up? Regular coupons. I have one product overstock and desperately want to get rid of them in this holiday season. Um, as far as lightning deals, I would maybe recommend if you have overstock doing um, just a regular old deal, like a 15% a off. I don't know. 20% actually, I think is the minimum uh, for Black Friday deals. Uh, so the caveat with lightning deals is unless Amazon changed this, you don't necessarily get to choose your time. So that lightning deal might run from like midnight to 6 a.m. And there's not really a lot of shoppers on at midnight from six. I mean, it might be different from Black Friday, but statistically not really. Um, so instead of a real lightning deal, I would recommend just a regular old coupon. So percentage or money off or um a promotion, but it depends on your product, right? If you're selling phone chargers, then a promotion like buy five, get one for 15% or buy one free would work, right? But if you're selling like um, a really specific product, like, I don't know, a Funko Pop figure, <laughs> that's not very popular, then people are probably not going to buy a five, get one free. But um, yeah, Jason, do you have anything to add on how we should be doing deals on Black Friday? If this is overstock, you might not be eligible for a lightning deal. Amazon doesn't want low velocity items on lightning uh, deals. You'll see, you'll get a little error that says, uh, mm -hmm. oh, geez, what does it say? Uh, the, there, this doesn't have yeah. a established price or something like that. Yeah, you'll go in the be back like end. Or... Yeah, you'll go in the back end says, and you'll check. It has list price. It has offer price. But it just doesn't have sales velocity. Uh, and uh, Amazon doesn't want that on a lightning deal. 
Yeah. So um, now that won't keep you from a regular promotion or coupon, but that is something to keep in mind for a lightning deal as well. So um, yeah. (laughs) And then, and then at, well, if it's overstock, you probably don't want to put any more money into ads or anything, but uh, you could also do uh, some ad campaigns uh, Matt can tell you more about that on Tuesday, but like, if, for example, if you have an I, a campaign that's like iPhone chargers, you could do another campaign, iPhone plus iPhone or iPhone plus iPhone plus chargers plus. Sorry. This is why Matt has his own podcast. Cause it took me. There, five there's minutes. a, there's, there's a time when you have overstock and it's just not working where you have to make the decision of, Hey, you know, okay. Black Friday happened. We put more we, we uh, turned the ads on, we cut the price. We're just trying to break even and nothing uh, still didn't still didn't get anything out of it. It's time to uh, recall that product and uh, sell it at the swap meet or, or donate yeah. it to Goodwill. Uh, Facebook marketplace. Or donate to the Salvation Army, not Goodwill. Yep. Next. Yep. FBA. Oh, I guess that was for the other question. Yeah, yeah Michael. With the, the subscribers yeah. saved me. I do you yeah, want so, yeah, he does okay. have subscribers. Yeah, that's that's pretty normal, Michael. Like I said, they uh, they 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 will pull the pending orders uh, for the subscribe and save uh, b- before, like weeks before, sometimes because they're assuming that that customer is going to uh, continue the subscription, and they want to make sure that there's uh, stock. Even if you have like twelve thousand units in stock, they're still going to pull it to reserve it for that subscribe and save. Yeah. Also, fun fact, I don't think a customer can cancel a subscribe and save if it's like a certain day, a number of days before it's supposed to ship. So, well, they can they can just return it. <laughs> well, no, they, can. they can. Like, that's not saying that this is going to fix your problem. I'm <laughs> just saying like that. That would be another reason like why those orders would show up prematurely or like weeks in advance because Amazon's like, no, this is in the system. Like we're ready to go. All right. And then DU Vegan asks, if I have two variations of one product and I have different bullet points on both of them, it will help with SEO. It's like both a child will work hand in hand with ranking SEO. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that would um, if you have different keywords on both variants of a parent listing, yeah, you would index on both of those keywords. So that is uh, definitely an SEO strategy there. So, yeah, you are you are correct in doing that. Um, as long as the keywords are relevant and, you know, there are listings that have several relevant keywords. So, all right, next. <laughs> Does Faith always enjoy a DQ a Blizzard on Fridays? No, um, it's actually a DQ breakfast sandwich. And my sister held me at gunpoint and made me door dash it. So um, what is in the cup? That's not a breakfast yeah. sandwich. This is not a breakfast. No, this it's a diet coke. <laughs> <laughs> it's a diet coke. Oh, we, we always we always have nice breakfasts on Fridays. You know, just gotta live a little. How can you have soda with breakfast? How do you not have soda with breakfast? I don't. Like I don't drink. I can't drink soda. Like it's too sweet for me. Like, but I can't imagine. Like, yeah, that's why I drink diet soda. Like you get yes, all of the benefits of soda. And also probably cancer, but it's not as sweet, so. <laughs> Mohammed. <laughs> Mohammed asks, how do placements work for product targeting campaigns? For example, what is top of search versus product pages mean if there is only one spot for when you are targeting a product? So this is a good question. Uh, what a top of search uh, targeting strategy will do is you can choose to pay up to a certain percentage amount in order to show up at the top of search. So Jason looks like he's about to pull up an example for us. And while he does that, I will answer your second question. So product pages is essentially the same uh, uh, strategy, not the same strategy, but the same concept is the word I was looking for, but for product pages rather than search. So if there's like a competitor that's almost exactly the same as you and, you know, they're a big competitor and you want to make sure your ads show up there, then you can do the product uh, page targeting and then choose to pay up to, um, you know, like if you did 100% more and the bid was $2, then you would pay $4, for example, to show up on that competitor page. So we are getting our visual ready and we will show you what that looks like. Here we go. 
Slinky, slinky. Slinky. <laughs> desk. <laughs> Just ready for uh, an example. Yeah, all right, so that's, your, that's your headline. Yep. Sponsored brands. You've got top of search here. Sponsored products. And you've got your highly rated sponsored. This is weird. Why is this Christmas toy thing in here for Slinky? Are they in wind the same up? category? Oh, I guess it's a wind-up toy. Oh, I have one of these things. Ooh. It's really fun. I don't know where it is, though. It's in a pile. It's in my pile somewhere. This is <laughs> a sponsored pile. brand video. Um, but just to go off with face, uh, face, face corrector, um, you you need to you, you there's a calculator for sponsored um, for for top of search product placement depending on where you're at and your product life cycle. Uh, I can't remember what it is again. It's like a hundred. You take your your total ad spend for that campaign that campaign group. You multiply it by some number and then uh, divide it by some number. Uh, it's on our web page. I can't. I don't yeah. remember what it is. <laughs> there, there is a formula for that, though. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's a bid on top of search for the specific uh, product placement. Oh, it's a sponsored product, I should say. Yeah, sponsored product. Next. Yeah, watching this, like, <laughs> all right. D Vegan asks. I tried to use flat file to group six variations under the same ASIN. If I get an error called 8032 for one of the variations where Amazon is saying that variation belongs to another parent, ASIN. Yep. Or something like that. At the end, the variation shows alongside with others under the parent, but it is an active out of stock. Even if I have livestock, I don't know how to fix it. Part three. I don't have any other parents for those variations. So is phantom. Sorry, go ahead, Faith. I was going to get to asking if it was a, parent, a phantom parentage, uh, but I was going to ask in a roundabout way. I was going to say, is it possible somebody else sells these products on another account and perhaps has them parented, which Maybe. is a parentage. So, A couple things um, you need to check before you do any flat file stuff. Uh, like mm -hmm. they said, make sure there's no one else selling new products. Uh, if there isn't, go into Canada, go into um, Mexico. If you're in the U.S., go to U.K., Search for your products. Are they there? Are you selling them? Is someone else selling them? Then go to Amazon China and check for your products. Uh, is Amazon selling them? Go into your settings. Um, if there's no parent and you and and you have you're sure of it, no extra parent on your thing. Uh, go into your settings. Go into uh, F, uh, fulfillment by Amazon, and I'll share my screen in just a second. And there's a little thing that you got auto enrolled into right here. Uh, allow Amazon to buy my products to sell globally. So if this is enabled, like I said, go to Saudi, Amazon, Saudi Arabia, Amazon, China, check if your products are, are there. If they are, Amazon's adding a retail contribution in those countries causing uh, they probably made a parent or something. Um, now turn this off because you're not getting any sales off of this. Uh, it's too expensive for Amazon to buy your product and ship it to China. No one's going to buy it. Uh, after that, go into the flat file, create a brand new parent, uh, new SKU, new uh, blank ASIN on the flat file, um, ASIN as the identifier. Make sure all of your children, their identifier, let's get the flat file example out. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite. <laughs> um, make sure your children, their product ID type are all ASIN and use the ASIN as the identifier not the UPC or GS1. So for example, um, your parent here, let's say this is the parent, is going to be blank. Your six children are going to say ASIN, and the ASINs are going to be here, OK? And that's going to be the fix. Uh, pretty, I'm pr like 90% sure you'll be able to fix it doing all of those things we just talked about. Sorry, Faith. Yes, yes. No, that was, that was a good addition. No, I because I'd forgotten about the uh, global permissions thing, even though we mentioned that in uh, like a couple of podcasts ago. So yeah, uh, yeah, Gregor Lungu. I like that name. It reminds me of like a Star Wars character. It reminds asks, me of like Game of Thrones, Gregor. <laughs> Sir Gregor. <laughs> asks, 
Hello, how does it exactly work, the replacement option? I have customers who ask for replacements and keep old products. Amazon is not doing anything on that. Thanks. So with FBA, it depends on what they say. So if the product is FBA, it depends on how they request the replacement. So if they say that the item came broken or damaged, then Amazon will not require a return. They'll just go ahead and send it. Whereas if they say something like, um, or it depends on the product category too, because if it's like a backpack with like a broken strap or something, that's one thing. But if it's a glass product, Amazon will not accept that return. Um, Diapers. So it Diapers as well, yes. There's toilet a lot paper. of things. That toilet paper, <laughs> returns. So it depends on the product category, but if it's uh, in what the customer chose as um, the re return or the refund option. So one way to get around this is, um, well, you, for FBM, you can set up your, uh, so you do have to have a replacement or a refund option. That's a non-negotiable you can't just say no return or no returns, no replacements, all sales final. You have to have an option. So one thing you can do is set up uh, your own custom options um, through FBM. As far as Amazon not doing anything on return on getting uh, old products back, they don't necessarily have to, like I said, depending on the product category or the return reasons. So that is unfortunately something that I don't think they'll budge on. If this is FBA, um, and you have customers messaging you saying, "Hey, it came broke. Uh, mm -hmm. I need a replacement." You, you, all you say in that situation, if your FBA is, "Hey, uh, we're sorry that you experienced this. This item was shipped and sold by Amazon. Please contact Amazon through the return uh, uh, channels in the app." Uh, you don't have to send replacements or anything like that if it's FBA. As Faith mentioned, if it's FBM and you're fulfilling it. Yes, you have to do all the customer service. You're not paying Amazon to do the customer service. Something r r arrives broken um, and they want a replacement, send them a replacement. Uh, it's not worth fighting or arguing over these types of things. It takes mm. way more time. Uh, you know, you, you say you're selling a $39.99 product and you're like 100% sure this person's scamming you and it didn't arrive broken. All that time you're going to spend proving that for 40 bucks is is going to be way less than just letting it go. <laughs> just count it. Right, yeah. <laughs> we get, we get clients yeah. all the time. It's like, Oh, I, you know, uh, you know, the, they're cheating me. You know, I'm like, dude, it's $18. Like, is it really worth like <laughs> is it worth the hassle? Is it worth the fight? You got to choose your battles with Amazon. Yeah, that's not the battle to choose. Um, yeah, yeah. Gregory, if, again, if they're, if they're FBA, Amazon does the customer service. Uh, you're not going to get in trouble if they don't send a replacement or anything like that. That's Amazon's. Uh, that's what you're paying them, the FBA referral fees exactly. and all that for. Exactly. So as annoying Next. as they are, they have a purpose. Next. Michael, thank you for thank the you, $5. Michael. King asks, what is the best way to set up hidden search terms when creating a new listing? Random keywords, specific order, repeat words or phrases? This is a great question, Michael. So in terms of hidden search terms, uh, first, I would check alt text for A plus content. So Jason, if you want to go ahead and prepare an example of what alt oh. text is, how we can get some hidden keywords there. So um, in terms of a strategy, I would focus on high volume search terms and relevant search terms at that. Um, and make sure that they're not too broad. You wanna put in, um, maybe not necessarily for alt text because you're only limited to like 100 or 150 characters there. Uh, but for backend search terms, you might wanna try um, some specific high volume search terms that are kind of long tail. So if you sell an iPhone charger, but it's pink, you could try like pink iPhone charger um, or like girly accessories, stuff like that. Um, repeat words or phrases. Um, no, I would try to use as many. Um, slinky. As, as, yeah, slinky. Love that example. I would hey. try to use. John or Sean, if you're watching, uh, let's uh, let's pitch uh, some services to the Slinky store. Their A plus content sucks. <laughs> yes, like we're trying to use you all as an example, but you need to hire us. Uh, going off what Faye said, Michael, um, <laughs> most important title and the uh, the uh, canonical 
URL. So it looks like they've recently changed their title because their canonical URL is uh, Slinky 601 original brand. Um, these these uh, first five to six um, keywords, very important than your title. Backend search terms, high velocity, high re highly relevant, exact match, uh, as many as you can get, uh, depending on if you have search terms or if you have, uh, what's the other one? I can't remember. One's 249 bytes, one's 249 characters. Then, as Faith mentioned, in your A-plus content, which Slinky only has one module here, in the Beautiful. back end, when you create your A-plus content, you can put words that you do not want uh, customers to see, like uh, misspellings, Spanish. And if we go to an A-plus content in Steven's uh, page here, let's just grab one on uh how about this one in the back end on each image when you're creating your a plus content is this little edit button on the top right corner in every image edit here see edit here and in there is your images and your alt text what we talked about is the image keywords this is where you're going to put in spanish misspellings uh other words that you may not have been able to get into the title or bullets and all that good stuff. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much uh, how you, uh, you pack your listing with some SEO. Yes. Great question. Thank you, Michael. One that everyone can benefit from. All right. Uh, D vegan, uh, came back with an update and said, I saw Amazon is selling my products on other marketplaces. Called it. Called it. Yep. Um, and then let's say it exists as a parent on some marketplace because Amazon is selling my products. How can I fix it then? I have to delete that parent somehow. Um, and then there's, there's one more part. Yeah. And then you were right, guys. I found Amazon UK is selling in Germany and he has 35 units from that specific variation. It seems they sell on all six variations. Now, how can I destroy that parent? I found Amazon UK is selling in Germany and has 35 units from that specific variation. Seems that see. somebody made this parent. Uh, so this is a phantom parentage. You have to tick it to get the parent yeah, to... dissolved. Uh, unless yeah. you can get the 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 ASIN of the parent, uh, which you can often do if you go to the PDP. Um, but you're going to go directly to the uh, child listings. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Try doing the flat file with the new, um, just the way I explained it, with a brand new SKU, brand new parent, and trying to see if you can override the current parentage. Um, uh, make sure you turn off that uh, that global selling that I told you about as well yeah. before you do that. Go from there. Otherwise, you're going to have to ticket this phantom parentage and break it. Well, it's not that, phantom anymore. We, we found the phantom. Yeah, it's not a phantom. It is The mystery has been solved by the Scooby gang. It was Amazon all along. Um, yeah. That would have been a good question for Halloween. Good reference for Halloween. But All right. Maney. Maney asks, hi, guys. My question is, how does the BSR disappear? What causes that? There are many ways, I believe. Thank you, guys. Yep, there are many ways. Uh, most commonly, Amazon will um, get rid of like a category or a browse node. Um, so they won't like completely remove a category like, oh, you can't sell this anymore. But they'll like slightly change it a little bit and it just messes everything up on the back end. Um, and then what are some other ways, Jason? That BSR so, will like, disappear. I know it's yeah, mostly like that. Faith, Faith mentioned um, category orphanage is, is a big one um, where Amazon just deletes a, a subcategory or merges a subcategory and your mm -hmm. your product gets orphaned out there when that happens. Um, it can also happen if you're doing like an upload and uh, you do like a full update and screw up the item type keyword or something like that. Hidden suppressions, um, adult flags, stuff like that will, will uh, make BSR disappear. Most mm -hmm. of the time though, it is a, a category orphan or um, browse node tree issue uh, you have to get uh, fixed. 
So it's a simple ticket. I think we've done it on the uh, podcast before, but real quick, uh, we'll look another demo. Hey, I'm also wondering how how on earth are they making? Look look how cheap these are, three dollars and fifty nine cents. Do they make these for like fifty cents? Is this like the small one or something? Maybe that's why. Small and light. <laughs> So Can you imagine getting this in like a bubble mailer? Two point seven five inches. I don't know. I think so that's like, the one I have. Hmm. Anyways, <laughs> very cheap. Twenty eight percent discount. Let's and there's a ninety six one. <laughs> look, at this, look at this ASIN too. It's like the world's it's first ASIN. B zero 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 zero. Oh my God! Yes. <laughs> Is this the cheapest? Did we find the cheapest product on Amazon? No, there's way cheaper stuff, probably. The All cheapest right. legit product Let, on Amazon? Let's use our Slinky as a, our example here. So we can see Slinky has a full browse node tree. Uh, we did that by deleting everything in front of the DP and after the slash on Amazon.com. Uh, we can see toys and games, novelty and gag toys, wind up toys. It's in the wrong category. <laughs> it's in the wrong subcategory. <laughs> Please, uh, please hire us, Slinky. We are John, seeing so John Wagner says uh, they used to be 99 cents when I was a kid. <laughs> it is um, really wild growing up and watching inflation happen in real time. <laughs> so let's pretend our BSR is gone or it's tanking or something's wrong. And we did this and we maybe saw that we're missing an item, uh, a subcategory or this just blank or we only have a main category. We just go into Amazon and open a, a ticket here and the help and scroll down say get support selling on amazon and just just uh paste the uh, asin in there and just type uh no bsr that's what i usually do <laughs> yeah, i mean uh, <laughs> why, why use many word when a few word do trick <laughs> that's right and then it's a search result question it's the recommended issue It'll uh, ask you for the ASIN again. Um, oh, I always do this. We can't demonstrate the ticket for something that we don't sell. So silly me. Let's grab um, something from Steven's store that actually we sell. Uh, well, well, actually, you don't sell Slinky, so you can't fix this. Jeez, uh, Jason, Jason, Jason. All right, here we go. Let's let's do let's retry this uh, together here. So. Paste the ASIN, just say no BSR, click continue, search result questions recommended, continue, ASIN, paste, continue. And ASIN is not searchable on Amazon. ASIN is not searchable on Amazon using keywords. So in this case, uh, we would have to check for a hidden suppression. Uh, and we'd click this, and then it did do a little thinging. Um, and it, it tells you if it's searchable or not. Uh, oftentimes, even if uh, it is searchable, this is where we're bringing up the category issue. And by searchable, I mean pasting the ASIN into a, uh, a Amazon search and the organic listing shows up. Uh, then you'll get a different message here that says um, there is, uh, I can't remember what it says. It says there's, there, we've, we've noticed an issue, um, we've, they'll open a, a ticket and then you'll have a case number and then go from there essentially. And it's, uh, yeah, Manny, it's, it's usually a, 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 now you can also get best sales rank. There's some categories, Manny, like, um, handmade, uh, mm -hmm. Amazon custom sometimes where, uh, there it says, uh, they just tell you BSR is not available in this category. <laughs> yeah. They said, no, we're not even going to try. <laughs> When that happens, you want to start finding um, a different category to move your item to. Because there are categories where, I guess, B, you know, they, like they say, BSR is not available. Uh, it's not a thing. So, hope we answered BSR your question. BSR is not consistent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Tion asks, how to lower the ACOS for an exact campaign? Um, that is a loaded question. It depends on what you're looking into. Honestly, I would go um, into your targeting, see what exact keywords you are targeting, um, see which ones you have a high ACOS on, and then go ahead and lower the bids for that one. 
Um, it could be if you're seeing high ACOS, it could be one week the bids for something was like $3 and then it like lowered down to like 90 cents or something. So definitely check your bidding. And for a more thorough answer, check out our Tuesday podcast. If you're, if you're again, again, as, as, as Faith said, this is completely product specific. If you have high ACOS yeah. and you're selling supplements uh, and you're, then that's normal. yeah, it's fine. Um, but <clears throat> if you have high ACOS, you're getting impressions, you're getting clicks, you're not getting conversion. And that means there's something wrong with your product, either the price, the main image, you're doing something wrong. You're not, you're not appealing to convert uh, on those keywords. The keywords are relevant because you're getting impressions and clicks, but you are not uh, converting sales. So check your price with your competition on those keywords, check your main image, see what the competitors are doing. And um, what's it called? Um, why do I always forget this darn quote? It's, I, I, I want to say mimicry is the sincerest form of flattery, but that's not right. It's oh, not imitation in- is the sincerest form of there flattery. There you go. Thank you. Yeah. 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 You would like I to imitate like your good competitor listening. Using my mind here. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> he said it's been a long week. <laughs> Bless you. DU says, thank you. You are so welcome. You are so welcome, sir. Oh, Ferran says, super sticker. Thank you. Thank you. And then Ferran asks, greetings from the UK. Question one of two. Would you know the case pack limit for individual items? I believe the limit is 150 units per case for case pack products. Yeah, that is at least the case in um, regular old Vendor Central. And then the second question, is the following statement true or false? New sellers who have been on Amazon for fewer than 26 weeks won't receive any Amazon FBA inventory limit at all. What? That's false. That is so false. New sellers will uh, get a limit of a thousand to start with, and then that limit will increase depending on um, like sales history and sell through rate and stuff like that. And now is a good time to mention that Amazon has recently cut restock limits for everybody. So that is especially not true now uh, for new sellers. Farin, if you, if you, uh, do well on your product launch, they'll they'll increase your, your, mm-hmm. your sales units, um, your yes. sales velocity. Um, what was it? What else? Uh, now I forgot. Well, I think the, the first part of the question was about case pack quantities being. Oh yeah, 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 that's what it was. Yeah, okay. yeah you're right. <laughs> so yeah, no, we answered that one really quick. <laughs> Both parts. Yeah, for for individual units, it's actually limited to the amount. Of uh, like you said, 150, or also the the maximum box size that you can ship mm-hmm. in. I don't know. I think it's the same for the UK um, as far as uh, the US, but I can't. I don't remember shipping anything to the UK in a while. <laughs> in a while, uh, yeah. <laughs> Mood. All right. Cool. Then Abdallah asks, this is one of my competitors, B0888SXBYL. I don't know why I said all that out loud. <laughs> He's selling less than the FBA fees and has been selling for that price for thousands of orders. How is that possible? Well, let's see. How is that possible? So Jason's already got the ace in here. This is, this is, <laughs> you know what this is, right, Abdallah? Number one, this is KitchenAid, which is like one of the biggest name brand um, kitchen, kitchen ever. Kitchen ever. Yeah, everyone you're knows asking, about that. How are they producing this at scale? And then your second question is you're asking, it's you're saying it's more than FBA fees. Well, guess what? So Amazon, <laughs> yeah, I was going to say Amazon. They're not paying FBA fees. <laughs> yeah, but they just bought this from KitchenAid and they're selling this themselves. So they're not paying FBA fees and that's how they're able to sell it for so low for sure. Your, your and that's also why they're getting thousands of orders. Yeah, your competitor is Amazon. KitchenAid is wholesaling this to Amazon. Uh, probably yeah. penny, each spoon probably costs them a, a penny and Amazon is making a couple, you know, 30, 40 cents on each of these and they're selling hundreds of thousands of these wooden spoons. The, today is the is the faith. Today is the let's find the cheapest product on Amazon day. <laughs> it really is the slinky. The slinky's winning. It's got, it's got a coupon. Where'd the slinky go? Hold on, we got to. We got to. How much was the slinky? Slinky. Hey, the, whoa! Why does it say it's ten dollars? Okay, it was this one. 
Oh, they were watching okay. our stream and they were like, oh, we got to raise our price. All right. Okay. Yeah. So the, the slinky was more coupon. expensive than the spoon. But, but the slinky has a coupon. Uh, does it? Yes, it does. Oh, wow. A 90 cent coupon. Yes. So, oh, oh this is the cheapest one that we found so 269. far. $269. And the Slinky is also being sold by Amazon. Which is why they're able to do that so cheap. <laughs> but yeah, hey, Abdallah, um, here's your, here's your, my suggestion to you. Um, you're not going to be able to compete on this. Where did the listing go? It's all screwed up now. There we go. Uh, you can private label your own wooden spoon, make uh, Abdallah's wooden spoon abdallah man, aid. yeah i wouldn't get into this market like amazon's cool. choice for wooden spoon <laughs> yeah amazon said no fees for us we're gonna give ourselves the choice badge anything oh, else and, like they've only got three images yeah focus um, Abdullah, focus on some products that are in the 15 to 25 dollar range <laughs> not not two dollars you, you can't you can't compete with this yeah you can't i mean you might be able to find some competitors that are in like a similar boat than you but definitely do not come do not <laughs> use this one as the benchmark made out of like premium cedar or something like that <laughs> yeah <laughs> premium amazon cedar michael thank, thank you God. again sir Yes, thank you so much. Michael says, we put a pause on syncing our Helium 10 listings to Amazon, and we're just copy and pasting them because we thought it was causing minor issues. Um, and, okay, yeah, and it's been a while. Should we be syncing our Helium 10 listings? What effect does this have? What if we delete or edit a listing in Helium 10? Does that directly affect the Amazon one? Oh, so it's talking about making listings from within Helium 10. So typically what I do is I'll make the listing on Amazon then sync it to Helium 10, doing the copy and paste, like what you're saying. Um, I have very, very minor experience with creating the listing from Helium 10, then Amazon first. And when I say minor, I mean like job before my Amazon guy, because that's typically not our process at all. Um, in my experience, having done it for that other company, it will mess up the listing if you delete it in Helium 10. It will also sync that deletion to Amazon and it can cause a lot of issues. So it's a lot easier to just go ahead and create it on Amazon first, then go into Helium 10 and start tracking your data that way. Yep, I've never I've never done this on Helium 10, so I'm trusting you. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, okay, I trust you. <laughs> Yeah, as Faith mentioned, we don't we don't use uh, there's some okay, I should say we do have uh, for example clients that use channel advisor and Faith is mm -hmm. very best uh, and myself uh, we, we've used done it that way because of the way channel advisor supersedes all contributions a lot of times and it's just a lot yeah. easier to upload in channel advisor. But never done this uh, on Helium 10 and it's not something that we would um, do at uh, my Amazon guy. Yes. All right, next one. Oh, Cherry Tea Tree Collection asks, hey guys, I let my coupons run out before Prime Day and never started them back. Do coupons help organic position? Mm, not really. I mean, the sales will uh, from the coupon if there are any sales attributed to the coupon, but for the most part, not, uh, just by virtue of having a coupon on the listing doesn't really do anything for the ranking. Did you get a sales boost while you're running coupons? Do you have any... Do you have any um, data at a previous before running coupons or did you just launch with coupons running um oftentimes uh as faith mentioned uh, kind of mentioned here i'm not a big fan of coupons um, mm -hmm. unless it's something like you're selling uh, the ones that work really well are you're selling a hundred dollar item and you're doing a twenty dollar off coupon at least right um where coupons kind of suck is kind of like where we just saw here on the on the slinky I didn't even notice that it had a coupon because it's already so cheap. Uh, and is this going to help me change my mind on buying the Slinky? Like, <laughs> I mean, it's already three fifty. I can say what you can say but like, but... Uh, the answer your your question, Cherry Tree, uh, is it, it's all about did it increase sales velocity? So if it did, it increased relevancy for those searches and, and terms that were coming up. Um, and conversion, which made you more relevant for those terms. 
uh so then yes it can help organic position for sure yeah it can also it hurt it <laughs> yeah exactly all right mickey hargrove asks when i run out of stock is it better to create a second skew on the same asin or is it better to temporarily deactivate the listing to preserve keyboard rank until stock is replenished create that second skew for fbm you never want to go out of stock and then if the fba goes out of stock it's just going to kind of revert over to the FBM listing. So um, yeah, to answer your question, create second SKU. Uh, you can do that. Just go to your previous SKU, hit add another condition, hit fulfilled by merchant. Easy. It just copies all your stuff over. What's rule number one, Faith? Never go out of stock. Rule Nikki, number if you one. find yourself in the position of a, um, a situation where you don't have any control and you know you're going to go out of stock, uh, hopefully, you know, a couple weeks beforehand, start raising your price, start cutting ad spend. That's how you're going to preserve your, your indexing the best. Going out of stock with no FBA um, backup is um, a death knell oftentimes to your everything, your indexing, your BSR. Uh, deleting or deactivating the listing is going to not do anything for you. It's, it's going to hurt you more. So raise your price, uh, cut ad spend, and don't go out of stock. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Holly uh, Picano asks, is there a way to get my listings to come up on the top of searches, even though I haven't gone through Amazon's brand registry? I've, maxim I've maximized keywords and descriptions the best I know how. So with brand registry, um, you would only want that, well, for a lot of reasons, but in terms of advertising, uh, you can still do a sponsored products advertising campaign without brand registry. You can't do sponsored display or a sponsored brand. So at the top there where Jason's showing the uh, Joe house, you couldn't do an ad like that, but you could do an ad like that. Um, so I would highly, highly recommend getting brand registry though, because if we do have our listings here at the top, we want that listing to look as good as possible. And chances are your competitors, if you have any, you might be in a niche and you might be um, the only person selling this type of product, but assuming you have a competitor, they're very likely going to have a plus or something there to spruce up their, your listing. So if you go that way, make sure your listing looks good and that somebody's going to want to convert on it. Um, and highly, highly recommend filing for brand registry, but you don't have to for that specific campaign. It's just a lot better if you did. You don't have to, but sure be cool if you did. <laughs> Get brand registry. <laughs> yeah. John asked, or John Wagner asks, does Amazon handle all tax payments to the states? Uh, yeah, I think they do. Yeah, a couple of years ago, all those, uh, all those, uh, those, I think California started it, and then a couple of states other. Uh, the same thing yeah, happened probably. on eBay, <laughs> where you were to, you're having to like remit sales tax because there's like cities and counties and different sales tax oh, rates yeah. and stuff like that. Uh, for for the average you know one man seller or or small business, it's just impossible to keep up with all that. So um, the the payment platforms, PayPal, Amazon, uh, Stripe or, or not Stripe? Oh yeah, Stripe's one. But uh, yeah. uh, all those they they all remit that uh, to the states and the counties and the cities. Uh, it's all taken out um, where you don't have to worry about that situation except for your own personal business taxes. HD Trader asks, how do you deal with counterfeit sellers on your ASIN? I have ordered samples and reported the infringement to Amazon, and every single time they deny my request to remove the counterfeit items. Um, um, are you taking, you have to take pictures uh, and, mm -hmm. and tell them why it's counterfeit. Uh, and yeah. uh, you, have, you have to prove it that it's counterfeit. If, if um, let's say, what we use always use the skate the skate tool here. Um, I can buy these on Alibaba for uh, you know dollar ninety nine or whatever. And uh, there's other there's people selling these uh, branded. So this let's just say this is Skater A skate tool, and I start selling the same thing. It doesn't have Skater A brand on it or anything like that. It's the same exact thing. And then you go, hey, that's counterfeit. That's not Skater A brand. And you do test buy and you order it, you take a picture and then you send it to Amazon and say, hey, this is counterfeit. 
no, it's the same thing, <laughs> right? Um, if you if you do have legit brand and this is a legit counterfeit, then you shouldn't have any issue reporting um, violation based on counterfeit. Heck, um, oftentimes you don't even have to do a test buy. You can report counterfeit without test buy. So you're, yeah. you're missing something in the process here on the report, um, uh, some sort of evidence or or mm -hmm. this is the exact same thing as you're selling. You're just mad that they're selling it too. <laughs> it also helps if you uh, kind of come, come at Amazon with like a little know-it-all response. If you're like, um, according to my trademark number, blah, 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 yeah. this product that has my name on it is a counterfeit and blah, blah, blah. Or if you have a design patent, uh, which would kind of throw Jason's example out the window. Because if you had a design patent. Yeah, if you have that, it's a different story, but. And it's a different story. So, yeah, mostly you just in your responses with Amazon, you want to be as technical as possible, almost like you're writing like a, an argument or a research paper, like uh, because of this trademark uh, that was filed on blah, 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 then this uh, other people should not be selling on this name or design or whatever. I like how when you're when when you get into your 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 like trademark talk faith, you've got like a little like because <laughs> uh, it is. I see trademark and I'm like, ugh. I'm talking like this, like I'm <laughs> going to law school. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Cherry Tree Collection says, "Thanks for the previous answer. I let Amazon deduct my PPC fees from my sales." before their payment to me, should I instead charge that to a credit card and get the cash back? Any negatives? Um, Jason, you can chime in on this, but I'm going to say no. I mean, if you want the cash back, you can do that. 100% you can definitely... put your ad spend on your American definitely... Express card. Yeah, I was going to oh, say, you can God. definitely charge your credit it's card free, for that. It's free money. It's <laughs> yes. free money. Yes, go get that spending, money, girl or guy. You're already spending money on ads. <laughs> let, that, let that accumulate whatever, some yeah, miles, go on vacation. Go yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. There's nothing in their TOS that says you can't do that. That I don't know. No, they they, they, they yeah. prefer it. They, they use that as your primary. You can always have the backup. Uh, I mean, the backup mm -hmm. is your your rolling balance. So exactly, yeah. free yeah. money. Free money. We approve. <laughs> right. Matthew McCormick asks. If you are in launch stage and launching in the UK first, would you recommend to get started in the US ASAP? Does the honeymoon period repeat if you launch in another country? Jason, correct me if I'm wrong, is the honeymoon period tied to another ASIN and that's why, or tied to another ASIN, tied at the ASIN level. And that's why it's so hard to kind of relaunch the honeymoon period under the same ASIN, like if you delete and then relist it. So I would launch in all marketplaces simultaneously based off of my understanding, which Jason may have something to add. So I'm getting a lot of coaching calls the past two weeks um, from UK sellers and looking at the market trends on, on UK right now uh, with uh, clients that we have that do sell in the UK, as well as uh, just like the community and Things aren't going well in, in the Amazon space in UK right now as far as sales. Yeah, uh, from what I've been seeing too. And then on top of it, they threw in these inventory limit slashes. Uh, if I was uh, in your position, like Faith mentioned, I would launch in the larger marketplace first mm -hmm. or simultaneously with the UK. The US marketplace is so much bigger yeah there's more competition but so much bigger that your chances of success are depending on your product i have to be you know if you're launching slinkies you're not going to make it or wooden spoons but yeah <laughs> i mean we, we saw that you can't compete with like two dollars yeah so so i would i would hold your launch if you can um and launch in the u.s as well but if you can't Here's the thing about the honeymoon period. Nobody, nobody, you know, it's, it's like a unicorn. It's, uh, it, it, it's <laughs> a mythical creature that's impossible to catch. Right. And yep. everybody has their theories on the honeymoon period. Amazon has never really confirmed it exists. Uh, but everybody's always worried about this honeymoon period. Oh no, the honeymoon, we, we're going to miss the honeymoon period. 
we don't even we don't have no facts on it. It's just all a wide range of guesses and things that people see that assume happen when you when you launch a product, right? Now I myself have seen, oh yeah, we must have had a honeymoon period on this because nothing else makes sense. Uh, we didn't drive outside mm -hmm. traffic, we didn't do this, or Amazon's choice for like a couple days on this. That doesn't make sense, right? So there's things that happen, but but in in the grand scheme of things that's probably the least of your problems when launching a product. <laughs> yeah. So um, if you have to launch in the UK first, do it. Don't worry about uh, missing a honeymoon period in, in the US at a later point. You'll get your reviews going. Should be fine. Should be fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it'll be good. All right, Malika asks, hello, if we buy products from brand recommended distributors, i.e. mentioned in their website, will Amazon accept their invoice? Need help. If we buy products uh, from brand recommended distributors, uh, yeah, they should, as long yeah. as these are legitimate products and you don't have some sort of agreement with the distributor or brand or manufacturer where you can't sell on Amazon, because that happens a lot. Make sure to read the, yeah. the language. Um, when you're buying stuff like this and anybody can call them up and, and buy the products, you're going to be competing with a million different people. Um, you're selling on another brand and you're wholesale arbitrage at that time, which isn't a bad thing. I used to do it all the time. Um, but you know, you're, com you're competing for buy box. You don't have control over the listings. You can't change them. You can uh, update the SEO. You can't update the images. You can't add a plus content. Uh, you can't do yeah, <laughs> so <laughs> I, prefer, I prefer creating your own brand and doing it the uh, the private label way. But um, if this is your 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 uh, jumping off point, definitely go for it. I always recommend people try out retail arbitrage or wholesale arbitrage before they they start making their own brand and and getting all lost in that because you learn a lot of the basics doing that that retail arbitrage or wholesale arbitrage. Um, selling other items on Amazon, learning how to make FBA shipments, learning how the console works, and then you can get into the more advanced stuff. Exactly. And remember, the great Wayne Gretzky said, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So take a shot on something on Amazon. was not Michael again. Scott that said that? Yeah, Michael Scott quoting Wayne Gretzky. <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey Malin asks, where do sponsored display video ads show? Well, they will show, uh, oh, Jason's got us. He said, it, it'll he's be in not, the middle he, of the He's not talking about sponsored brands. This is the new one. Yeah, I know the videos. So this would be um, in on the middle mobile. of the Oh? Shows on mobile. There we go. No, there's also a video in the middle of um, the page too. This, this is sponsored brands. Yeah, that's on, that is on, oh, you are so up. right. Sorry, I get yeah, it. Yeah, let me, it. let me try. Maybe it's the app only. I don't know if we oh, can demo so this. Let me go on the app real quick. I will also look. So uh, just so everyone uh, knows what Jeff's talking about, recently uh, Amazon has uh, started, uh, it's not available in every account, but um, I think it's when like you... this thing that's showing up. No, there or might not be one idea? for Slinky. Type in, type in something like, I'm going to type in like towels or something. I'm going to type in wooden spoon. Wooden spoon. <laughs> oh, yeah, I got one on towels. And of course, it's, uh, oh, I, th I thought it was at Amazon. I, so it's, I, I don't know if I can demo this. Okay, so it's on the app. And when you scroll, you'll see a video. See the video starting? Oh, so yes, see, I see. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, it's it's a it's a sponsored display video. Um, I also found one for wooden spoons. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. See. <laughs> so that's where they display. They're not displaying, to my knowledge. I haven't seen it on the desktop yet, but uh, they are in the app uh, on the on the mobile. Uh, on the mobile, I sound like. <laughs> on the mobile. <laughs> Well, let me get my trademark voice. I'm on the mobile. I'll have to go get it. Sometimes on the mobile, they show. Just on the mobile. You can't find it on the website. All right, Best software to list on Walmart. Um, we use, uh, we use uh, bulk sheets. 
<laughs> Microsoft Excel. Yeah. Shout out to Kim Reyes, our Walmart. Shout out to Kim Reyes, the queen of Walmart. She saves me all the time on Walmart. I hate that platform so much. <laughs> yeah, same. Right, Yo, Yo Johnsel Art asks, uh, when doing a product variation, we must optimize all children, but what about the parent? Should we write an optimized title, description, bullets, and meta for the parent too? Thanks, you are awesome. Well, you are awesome. And to answer your question, it depends on your category. So some categories will use what's called a DPM model in which any, anything updated for the parent goes across all children. So you'll see that a lot with um, like clothes, I think, have a DPM model. Um, so really the only thing it changes though, you know, if you were just selling different sizes, it's not that big of a deal. Right. But, um, it is a good practice to optimize the parent, uh, but keep in mind if it is that model, it can, uh, go down. So if you were trying out, like, um, somebody earlier said that they had tried out different keywords on different variations. So you wouldn't be able to do that for certain parent models, um, but overall, not a bad idea. Like if you have all the same backend keywords, I would definitely recommend putting that into the parent ASIN, um, stuff like that, uh, making sure you have like a generic version of all the keyword or bullet points is what I was trying to say, all the bullet points, but yeah, uh, long story short, yes, but proceed with caution. DCM, the parent doesn't index, uh, DPM debatable. But uh, no. like Faith mentioned, oftentimes I'll still put the keywords in the, uh, out of superstition, I'll put the keywords on the back end on the parent, mm -hmm. even though it, it doesn't index. Um, but yeah, you good. Faith, Faith nailed it. Yep. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <Next one. laughs> on to the next one. <laughs> Trademark boys. Oh, no, I'll do the next one. Trademark what if I'm in the next one? Hi, I deal with low cost products and therefore many times the shipping cost is more than the what cost. Do you do? Why are you reading it? This isn't a trademark question. It doesn't matter. I just want to do the voice. Okay, how do I go about this? Please explain with an example. So he's got low cost products and the shipping cost is more than the cost of the product itself. Um, <laughs> is it wooden spoons? <laughs> wooden spoons. Wooden spoons and slinkies. <laughs> This is the day for wooden spoons and slinkies. This is what this video needs to be called on YouTube. Um, you, 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 well, you, you, you can you try and roll. Sell two yeah. packs. Sell, th sell three packs. Sell five packs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, quantities. Uh, maybe enroll in small and light. Uh, but I don't know if that would help much. <laughs> the shipping cost is already more than the product cost. Um, but yeah, I would try Jason's recommendation. Just bundle them up, two pack, three pack. If it costs if, if it costs you the same amount to ship five of these as it does to ship one, then there you go. I'm guessing they're small but items. Solution. Abdullah asks, I follow on every platform. I filled the form for hands-on experience and job. I completed my PPC course from different platforms, including my Amazon guy. I need PPC and hands-on experience. Um, Abdullah, I guess you're still waiting on a response. Is he looking for a job? I can't you're looking for that. a job. Is, is, it time <laughs> to plug, is, it, is it time to plug where to apply at my Amazon yeah, guy? Why don't you show the people where to apply at my well, I would guy. love to. I would love to. First, you're going to navigate to myamazonguide.com. Then I'm going to present my screen. And then you can either go to this link slash Oh, jobs. look at Geraldine. She, Geraldine on, on top she of it. Said, I got it. Where you can go here, apply here. We're hiring. You can check out our reviews, internships, and then we have breakdowns of each role. So for you specifically, it would be PPC. Uh, look at Matt there. He's just working hard or hardly working. I'm kidding. He works hard. Um, you can apply from there. Uh, it sounds like you already filled out the form. If you did, please be patient with us. We do get a lot, a lot of applications. So if we haven't got to yours yet, uh, we're probably still just going through them. So uh, just be patient if you've already filled this out. But if not, go ahead and fill it out again, and we will get back to you as soon as we can. Next. That's all I got. That's all I got. Just 
leave this picture of Matt up on the screen. Okay. Arfon asks, hello, Sarah. I was creating a new account, so Amazon sent me a video call and a link. When I opened the link 20 minutes ago, the link was not opening. Um, when the time was up, it was still not opening. Then later I opened the account. The account was suspended. Now what should I do? I've also changed the date, but now tell me if my account will be fixed or not. So yeah, there is it, a fix. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead, Faith. Yeah. I was going to say, so there is a fix here. Um, now for the details of that fix, I will defer to Jason, but it is definitely fixable. It sounds like you already rescheduled the call. They, they just need to confirm your identity. Yeah, that's all that is. Uh, there, it's, it's their way of trying to weed out um, any counterfeit sellers, even though clearly a few still slip through the cracks. But oh, it's a way to weed out bot bots, essentially. Yes, yes, um, yes. That's, that's what I should have said instead of counterfeit sellers, because that is a broad yeah, way. You're, you're not, you're not incorrect. Yeah, you're, you're not incorrect. Uh, but Arvin, you <laughs> should have a, you should have an email or a case or something, uh, where, where the, uh, the. Uh, the link that you're talking about came in. Uh, you just need to respond to that and, and ask for a reschedule. You can also request, you can also request a postal verification. Um, but uh, you have to, you would have to be, if this is the U S marketplace, you would have to have an address in the U S for that postcard to be mailed to you. And that will have a little code on it. And then you send them uh, the code and your account will get uh, fixed there. That is that is true. That's all you got to do. Just got to reschedule. Get on a call with them. Show them you're real. Show them you're not catfishing. Here a good asks. Uh, we have an issue with the new manage FBA inventory screen. Yeah, it is now showing any SKU that has been duplicated in the last few years due to an incorrect SKU upload against the same ASIN. And then I believe we have a part two. We have tried a flat file, delete, manual delete, and an X delete. However, no luck. SKU is still stuck showing in manage FBA inventory. This only affects manufacturer barcode FN SKUs. <laughs> That's strange. Yeah. Uh, all right. So is this bothering you? <laughs> it would something? bother me, honestly. I have a little OCD, so I, I get where he's coming from, <laughs> but... But I think what Jason's getting at is it doesn't necessarily hurt anything. I think it's just more so an annoyance. Well, I'm, I'm just going to go into Steven's like thing here. There, yeah. You can filter some of these out as well. Like I, I really don't, I'm not grasping the entire entirety of the question of what the problem is. Uh, you just can't delete a skew is uh, what I'm, I'm guessing here. Yeah. But... I'm thinking, yeah, there's like some older SKUs from back in the day that are still showing up there. And even after he tries to delete them and every way happening to me, I would, I would just like click active uh, listings and all. And then the, those old ones wouldn't show up uh, if, because they're not active. They're like you said, or they're, they're not. Um, yeah. I would filter, but the other, yeah, you have to get these deleted somehow. Uh, so you say you already tried, and that's the way I would do it. So, yeah, flat uh, file. He did everything under the sun. Uh, would, case? Uh, yeah, I would imagine a case. They would just tell you the same thing. They would say, yeah. "Oh, please perform a delete on on the SKUs, which you've done." And then that's whenever really you strange. tell them that, they'll be like, "Yeah, we'll forward it to our internal team, and then you'll never hear from them again." So, I wonder if there's some sort of weird. It's always maybe like a vendor central thing going on here, like a connection. Ooh. That might be it. That might be, or, or if you had uh, those SKUs on like your Shopify site or any sort of e-commerce site oh, that might yeah, check your apps. Your right, right? Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, if you have any apps that might be syncing them there. Go to your partner network and check manage your apps you might have some rogue app that turned back on or something like that mm -hmm. um see what has access active or disabled or whatever um and uh check there uh because uh, the face completely right that now that we, we already talked about channel advisor before happens mm -hmm. all the time like uh, uh where skews that got deleted years ago just pop up randomly all of a sudden yeah. Um, that's what I would check. Nice call out, Faith. Yes. Yeah, I literally <laughs> remembered that spur of the moment. 
Oh, another five from Michael. Thank you, sir. Are we allowed to put the words bonus, free gift, gift in the title? If not, what is the actual product says gift on it? So I, I wouldn't say, um, well, actually with this one, I wouldn't say free gift, but you can say like makes a great gift or great gift for her, great gift for him. Uh, it's all about how you frame the language. Um, if it does come with a bonus, you could say like gift box with bonus ribbon. I don't know. That's a little different. But I would err with caution on the on stuff like that because Amazon, uh, their their terms of service specifically, they're not they don't want people to go off their website and they don't want people to have the expectation that they'll get free stuff um, or extra accessories. Now, all that to say, you're more than welcome to send like bundled stuff and like bonus items, but you have to be very careful with how you word it. Michael, don't put bonus or free gift in your title or anything like that. It'll probably get yanked. You can put gift yeah. like Faith said. Um, this makes your listing look cheap. <laughs> it's yeah. you, you are so desperate that your product sucks that you're going to include something else that 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 they don't want, right? Um, don't put this. Brand your product. Make it look premium. Make it better. Make it better than the competition. Uh, this whole oh bonus gift oh if you call in the next 30 minutes we'll include an additional item this is old school uh you know qvc stuff we don't need that on amazon make yourself uh, uh known make yourself out there make your brand um popular the the, the free gift stuff save it for the carnival forget about it <laughs> <laughs> forget about it all right Hamza asks hey guys just recently optimized the listing with new keywords and ran new ppc campaigns and got incredible results regarding sales plus i got the amazon choice badge okay but i have noticed that the keyword indexing hasn't improved quite a lot just index on two to three more keywords that's all what do you think is the issue um it could be changes in market trend it could be Let's see. Let's pull up part one again, because it sounds like we had a really good launch, but we're only indexing on like two or three more keywords. What else? Let's see. Yeah. New keywords. It's, right? an SEO. it's, it's probably yeah. an SEO issue. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. SEO is not set it and forget it. Hamza. Yeah. Yeah. Changes. Brand tab. Search term screen. behaviors. Yeah. Go to the last month. Oops. Wrong year. Oh, October's available now. Nice. Yeah. It wasn't available yesterday. Um, look at look for strike zone keywords in here. So uh, you're looking for high search volume, highly relevant to your brand. So you're going to see your branded keywords and your specific uh, product type keywords at the top, and you're going to look at, start looking at um, where you're getting your purchases and where you're organically indexing for those purchases, or like fuzzy sweater for women, for example. In this in in this example. Is that exact match SEO in our title? Is it in our copy anywhere? Uh, you need to do a full full SEO revamp on on your on your title copy, back end search terms. Make sure all of your where you're sitting organically uh, in the in the um, in the fifth like mid page one, fifteen to twenty five, and highly relevant stuff at page two that you've gotten purchases on. That needs to be loaded into your SEO, and then you also need to make exact match uh, uh, campaigns for, for for those in your PPC if you haven't already. Uh, and because you know you're getting purchases, you know you're getting card ads, you know you're getting clicks. It's in time to increase your your uh, percentage of the impressions, your brand share of the impressions on those products because you know that they will convert. And you, this is these are the exact match campaigns that you bid on. You spend money. You go top of search because they're all going to convert. This is so true. Jason is absolutely correct. Expert in every way. All no, right. No, not Walmart. No, except for Walmart. <laughs> Some, but not all the time. <laughs> Noman asks, I have one question. Let's say any of your main keywords is performing like we get three or four orders per day from that keyword, but after a couple of days, we are unable to get orders for one or two days. Um, <laughs> this is my people looking at the micro faith. What do we always say? Yeah, is so Edgar, um, is Edgar watching? Is Edgar watching today? Edgar, Edgar are, you are, you watching? are you watching? So yeah, with stuff like that, you can't 
So checking it every day is like if you're trying to lose weight and you get on the scale every day, you're going to get discouraged. There are fluctuations, um, you know, from day to day, especially with, especially with PPC. Like one day you might have 90 percent a cost, but then the rest of the week it's 10 percent. So then your average is really, really good. But if you were only looking at that one day, and you're like, oh, my God, what happened? Um, so typically what we'll do is we check about once a week. Sometimes there are cases where we'll check a couple of times a week, but we kind of monitor just once a week and get a view, a bird's eye view of the overall like week's worth of data. Like, are we down from the week prior? Okay, yes, then why? Or okay, no, where can we improve? Stuff like that. So yeah, don't look at it at the micro level. Um, it really could. Now, if this is a pattern, then I would start to worry. But if it's only just like a couple of days worth of like slow sales, it could honestly be a lot of things people don't have money people aren't really looking for it those days there's some items that sell more on weekends than they do like throughout the week so it could be like a trend um but yeah don't focus too much unless it's been a long-standing pattern definitely pay attention to oh wait what the, maybe you have a suppression or a hidden suppression or something oh yeah like that. That, yeah but but going, oh, no, yesterday we only sold one item. Uh, what happened uh, is going to drive you crazy. Uh, mm -hmm. We have we have one client um, for a while, uh, you know, was getting like no sales on the week. Uh, like Faye said, like no sales on like Saturday and Sunday. We're like, what the heck's going on here? And then like sales would like spike Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then start going down. Well, I mean, it, it made sense once you looked at the macro, uh, the type of products he was selling are the type of products people need on the weekend when they're going hiking or something like that, you know? So, uh, <laughs> yeah, so they're trying to buy it. nobody's yeah. buying on the weekend because they're out there using it. Right. Exactly. So. <laughs> All right. Next. Awesome. Next. Hi, when doing a product, and this is from you, John Zool Art. Hi, when doing a product variation, we must optimize. Oh, we already answered this one. Yes. So optimize the parent to at least the back end keywords, but it also depends on your parent model. Those might like filter on down. So, okay. Um, we got more questions. I'm seeing. Some I know we do. Here. Okay. Avi asks, get. I got a review from an old customer through uh, mail. Can we use super URL for it or redirect them to detail page or any best way? Attribution. Oh, you mean like re attribution? Yeah, but I think he's also wanting to redirect the review to the Amazon page. Or he like wants the review because he said he got a review from an old customer through mail. Oh. Yeah, he you wants like add, that. Right, you, don't, you can't add reviews from others. Mm -hmm. Courses. But if you're talking about um, doing an, like a, a, what? No, sorry, I was gonna say like if you want to monitor I heard, it. Yeah. I just heard. Okay. I just heard. Sean, I just heard Shantae typing. Yeah. <laughs> 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 sorry. She's like, uh, you know, one day we should have a podcast format where we bring her on and have her try to answer Amazon questions based off of what she's learned from me, hearing me on like and stuff <laughs> i think that would be so funny uh, <laughs> all right what do we got here uh how to remove a field permanent where, where restriction where'd it go oh, go back oh uh, there were like five where questions behind okay all right what happened there we go get review oh, from no. the old I don't, yeah, okay I we, we already one. answered that one. one yeah good next yeah. one Okay, here we go. How to remove appeal permanent restrictions of proactive messages. Being not able to send mails through third party tool, only manual messages are allowed. Um, I would take an Amazon about that. You you, 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 you you restricted yourself. You need a plan of action begging Amazon yeah. uh, that you'll never do it again. You obviously broke the rules um, uh, mm. or did something. So uh, I've seen these last permanently uh, on accounts even with plan of actions being submitted. So yeah, that's your, be really, that's convincing. Your advice, right? really convincing. Like pretend that the person, the love of your life left and you're writing the letter to get them back. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Cause that's how that works. Right. Craig asks any advice for running ads for children's books. Is it safe to say that people buying kids books are more so browsing than typing in specific keywords leading to a book? Uh, I would check out your search query performance report regarding that because I honestly you might not have one. 
Oh, that is true because it's, it's books. Books are the the weird. Yeah, they're a little, like, they're a little different, a little little weird. We are still navigating that one. Um, oh, like how to best market books and stuff. Um, in terms of, is it safe to say people buying kids books are more so browsing in general than typing in a specific keyword? This is why I said like uh, the search term analytics report might be helpful to at least see like what kind of search behaviors are drawing people to your listings because I, I'm not a parent, so I really couldn't tell you what people search for. But I think if I were getting a book for a kid, I would specifically be typing in children's books or something along those lines. Like I wouldn't be typing in like, gifts for kids or something so i would say of, yeah go ahead i was gonna say there's two types of buyers in, in this type of market there's <laughs> there's the the grandmas and the aunts uh looking for a present for little jimmy um mm -hmm. so there's those keywords which are your generalized oh um book for seven-year-old um best books for seven-year-olds and a mm -hmm. lot of times they're not typing the stuff directly into Amazon. They're typing into Google and they're going and looking for blogs and uh, other things, maybe even Reddit. But um, the second customer is going to be the actual parent um, where they're getting recommendations from their peer groups or from their kid. And, and like, oh, what is your friend reading? Um, oh, what did the teacher recommend? That sort of mm -hmm. stuff. So your space here is a bit segmented into um, how can you get your book out there is the most important thing um, yeah. instead of driving PPC traffic to it. Now you will have to obviously drive uh, some ads here, but this is the like, books is like, phew, I, I do not like <laughs> working yeah. on books. And uh, specifically like, children's books too, it can be a little complicated because Amazon has this whole thing about like uh, marketing to kids and all this. So, or at least they do with their affiliate program. Uh, obviously the, you can sell toys and stuff on Amazon and obviously run PPC for it, but just- I like coloring yeah. books because they're not actual book category. For other people that don't yeah. know, um, book category doesn't have um, the usual type of uh, setup as far as SEO, bullet points, that sort of thing. It's yeah, run by the times, I Yeah, I was going to say a lot of times we don't even have an ASIN. It's an ISBN. It's run by the ISBN. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, and it's literally mm -hmm. like the information pulled from that database. That's about it. Uh, you have hard time adding pictures and stuff like that. There's more strict requirements on what you can put in the listing as far as pictures and that sort of thing. Um, and I like, I actually like uh, uh, KDP better um, if you have mm -hmm. Kindle Direct, Craig. Uh, a lot easier yeah. to get sales on that, uh, surprisingly. But yeah. I don't think, I don't think that it, but I, that wouldn't apply here because I don't think kids are reading books on Kindles, so. Oh, uh, they might read them on iPads. People might I don't buy think, like. Can you do Kindle on iPad? I don't know. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. But, but doesn't that defeat the purpose of the Kindle though? Isn't the Kindle meant to be easy on the eyes? Like. Yeah. So a Kindle is different in that it's got like a, some sort of regular, like, or not regular, but some sort of special like backlight to make it look like you're actually reading a book. So I per personally prefer reading on a Kindle than reading on like an e-reader. So like the Kindle Fire, which is essentially a Kindle iPad or an iPad or an iPhone. But I do have a Kindle app on my iPhone and you can read it on your iPad. But are we, yeah, that are, we just, are we plugging Kindle Amazon products right now? <laughs> no, no. Miss, Miss Faith and Kindle, Kindle uh, Queen over here. <laughs> No. <laughs> um, yeah, the download Kindle for iPad. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Amazon give me right. affiliate money. Anyway, good luck on your book, Craig. Yeah, Do some good book luck. Writing. All right. Oh, oh no, we, we that already one. answered that one. All right. Cherry Tree Collection asks I'm trying to get A plus premium, have 15 A plus approved, and I've tried to add a brand story. To each ASIN, I have about 700 ASINs. Is there a report showing which ASINs have the brand story? Uh, unfortunately not, but if you go into your A-plus content manager and pull up the brand story um, project, 
it'll show you which ASINs have been applied. And it looks like Jason might be getting us an example, or maybe he was looking at like the time or something. So no, I was gonna say what I would do, Cherry Tree, um, make a duplicate of the brand story and download your category listings report. Ah, uh, no, no, not not your category listings report because it's gonna show you PCs. And download your your all listings report or active listings report, probably all listings. Um, on that spreadsheet, just copy all the all the UPCs or the the ASINs, and then paste it in that copied brand story uh, for the oh, yeah. ASINs, and then just click submit, and it'll it'll, yeah, it'll copy over a cover. Uh, and then uh, if it's not showing up after that, we have had a ticket for this uh, multiple times on multiple accounts where we say, "Hey, we've met all the requirements. Please unlock the premium A plus," and then they'll unlock it. Yeah. And if they don't, then usually it becomes like they said something on a case I filed once, like a plus typically becomes available at the end of the month or something. So just check. Um, I guess they reevaluate. Why, is, every why is the trademark voice the seller central support voice now? I am. No, you're right. The seller central support should be like, oh, this will be unlocked next month. <laughs> they are. <laughs> they, they are not. Um, all right, uh, next question. If, we, if there is a next question, how to resolve indexing issues? Um, I would start, Siddharth, uh, by downloading SEO. your... Yep, yeah, SEO. Just, just do it, SEO. Yeah. We already, we, it's the same thing we just went over with the search query performance. <laughs> Me about what, to what? go into a long answer. You're no, like, no, I'm not going to go into it again. There's a 40-minute video <laughs> on our website. <laughs> Said, There's a 40 minute video on our YouTube that Steven did. It's 40 minutes long. It's everything you need to know to resolve your indexing issues. It's called the ICAP marketing formula. You have to be brand registered for this. Um, if that is not applicable to you, go to one of the other uh, phase two strike zone SEO videos that are also like 40 minutes long. Hi, Raj. This side from India. How to get out of stock alert from Amazon detail page. Uh, go to. What is the process from the top of my head? Stock alert. For your own products or for somebody else's? <laughs> you need to, you, somebody, oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I was gonna say with somebody else's, it'll just be from the product detail page. If it's yours, like if, uh, the if you want alerts. Hmm? So he says the Amazon detail page. Mm, you, you, then, you need you need helium tiner or something uh, to yeah. alert you. Uh, there's a there's alerts in your settings. I've never even looked to see if this is. I don't think this is an option. Uh, uh, for other people, I don't think so. I think it's more so like your own alerts. No, I'm talking about for your own alerts, reports. Oh, true. Funding, just updates, emergency notifications. Yeah, you you need you need like Helium Ten or something. There's probably some free app out there that I don't know about. Uh, but uh, you should know that you're going out of stock. <laughs> Don't go out of stock. Uh, he probably has a large catalog. <laughs> yeah. Right. Kelly asks, is ShipStation good if I want to fulfill my own orders? So just to get things right, I have to join a selling platform and link it to ShipStation. Um, yeah, ShipStation's good if you want to do it that way. You can also do it from Amazon's regular managed inventory, but if you want like a good automated system, um, I've not heard anyone complain about ShipStation, but it has yeah. its it has its quirks. Um, yeah, they all what, do it, though. It's what we use uh, here uh, for um, Stevens um, for Aegis Age. So uh, yeah. Nick does yell at it sometimes, but overall, good. Yeah, you're Overall. gonna have to a platform to connect to it. Yes. Great. Oh, and then Avi asked, just making it clear again, we want to get reviews from an old customer via mail. I wouldn't do it. Uh, no. For that, we can use super URL, or is it efficient to redirect them to the detail page or any best ways? I just wouldn't do it. <laughs> Don't ask for reviews. Yeah. You'll get your reviews frozen. You'll get a warning, and um, if you keep doing Amazon. it, Amazon restrict you from manually sending messages like they already did like stuff like that so uh you're looking at all the wrong things abby you're going down a dark path my friend you're going down a dark path abby the dark side don't don't do it just ask for reviews 
how to improve, how to improve RC. CTR. Make There's your a... make your images relevant. Make your uh, price comparable to your competition. Uh, if it isn't in your premium product, make sure your images uh, show that you're a premium product. Yes. <laughs> All good. Sorry, it's Faith. Oh, I know we only had a few more left, and it's getting it's getting late here. And it is. oh yeah, it's so dirty. Shantae's probably like, I gotta get to the bathroom. <laughs> Y'all been in there? Okay. All right, everyone. Uh, this is the Friday live Q and A. My Amazon Guide podcast. We do this every Friday. Faith and myself. Yes. We are here to answer any and all of your questions every week. Any questions? Next week. We have Next Matt week. Davis uh, Tuesday at 5 Eastern every week. Um, Don't miss I'm it. not sure who his guest is, but Matt is great. PPC questions, in-depth PPC questions. Matt will get those for you. Um, Wednesday, <laughs> we have a special <laughs> podcast at 3 Eastern. There's podcasts every week next week, I think. Um, every day next week? Except for maybe t uh, Monday. Monday? Yeah, there's more on Monday. Yeah, because uh, there's Wednesday, I will be I will be having a a product a special product research and uh, product development podcast with my friend Dan Pescaros, um, Upstream Brands, uh, and then Thursday Stephen will be here doing the live seller uh, Q and A. Um, uh, he discussed in the beginning of the podcast, and then Friday. <laughs> Faith and I and then will Friday be back. Us. <laughs> and <then> we're back. <laughs> so we are so packed full. Of content. <laughs> we are packed full with live content next week, like all yes. week long, except for Monday. If you need any personal or one-on-one -on -one help, we've got myamazonguy.com. You can go to our coaching page. You can get uh, a call with Stephen, myself, Matthew, Francisco, Shabon. We've got all of our services, trademarks, uh, what a full service, listing reinstatements, account suspensions, audits, all here. And then I've also we have registration. <laughs> <Trademark registration. laughs> we also, of course, have our magdashschool.com with all of our courses. Uh, how much does a course cost, Faith? It costs less than it costs to DoorDash Taco Bell. So, <laughs> so do you want valuable knowledge or do you want a quesarito? The choice is yours. Oh, the Choose quesarito wise. does sound good, though. So, yeah. <laughs> Me, who already had Dairy Queen breakfast. Hmm, how about Taco Bell lunch? <laughs> uh, I'm Jason Mateo, and she's... Deniston. Not Stephen <laughs> Pope, but Faith Deniston. <laughs> and we will see you next Friday. Thank you, everyone. Have a great weekend. Bye.